All right, I'm out here to redo the finger curl power grip test, but this time with max power to see if they get similar differences. And so what I'm testing is on my power grip, these back three fingers curling them like this, the last knuckles curled, it's flexion in the dip joint versus extension in the dip joint where the index finger is always curled because it uh, doesn't have enough reach um, when you have the, for me, when I have the disc like this, the only way to get the index finger to reach more is by tilting the disc more up like that. So now the index finger has more reach. But tilting the disc like this makes it slightly more nose up and it doesn't even really feel any better or stronger for the index finger. Um, at least once you're used to the index finger barely hooking around. Um, for me, when it's barely hooked around, it actually feels a little bit more locked in because I kind of have to like struggle to reach it around the rim. And once I get it around the rim, it really hooks on. So that's why I'm only changing the back three fingers and keeping the index finger the same. Also, I'm going for max power, but I'm restricting myself to a walk up. So max walk up power instead of running up. I just don't want to be doing too many really hard run up plants right now because my knee is a little bit sore. All right, dip joint extension first. So as a reminder, that is going from this to that. All right, switching from, I just tested this. Now we're gonna curl it more. Previously, when I tried throwing max power with this one, it felt a little bit harder to get max power for some reason. I like maybe I wasn't gripping as hard because it doesn't feel as strong grip wise to me, or my body wasn't trusting that the grip was strong enough and was backing off. So I'm really gonna try to force myself to throw hard here. Also, I have strong grip strength from rock climbing in both finger positions, so I don't think that's an issue here. Yeah, see, this is why I never, when I did short tests before, I never stuck with this because I literally feel like I'm throwing 65 mile per hour effort, 64 mile per hour effort, and I got a 59. And I even restarted the tech disc because it happened before and I didn't trust it. So I threw that, that one out, thinking it might have been an anomaly or I might have messed something up. Ah. 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 All right, got a couple good ones, thankfully. I mean, just need to get a little bit more used to it. All right, 
just for fun, I'm going to try one with wrist curl and the uh, curled grip. All right, so here are the stats compared with a quick reminder of which one is flexion and extension. All right, so first off, uh, almost 5% increase in speed with my usual dip joint extension compared to an 11.8% increase in the average ADV ratio, which is tech discs comparison of spin to speed. So it's better to look at that than the raw spin numbers. 50 and above is usually where the pros with good spin are. However, it seems pretty common for there to be kind of a point where as the miles per hour continue to increase, the spin starts to level out. Like for example, you'll see many pros with like 1400 spin at 70 miles per hour and then at 75 miles per hour, they're still pretty close to 1400 spin. So the fact that I threw faster with the dip joint extension actually might be making that 11.8% a larger gap. Whereas if I also threw the same average speed with the dip joint flexion, that 11.8% I would expect to shrink in difference. Now the speed increase of 4.8% sounds small because 4.8% is not necessarily a big number, but anybody who's thrown with a radar gun knows the difference between 62 and 65 is miles per hour is actually pretty huge in terms of like effort required. To put it into context a little bit more with my normal grip and form, I can throw 62 pretty consistently and somewhat comfortably with pretty good angle control and gap hitting ability but I cannot do that with 65. I'm a lot more likely to mess up uh, some of my angles or miss a gap because I'm trying so much harder to get closer to my absolute max. And in a previous test, using my usual dip joint extension, but trying more wrist curl, I was able to hit 62, 63 miles per hour, but get all the way up to 1300 RPMs. So that's more spin than the dip joint flexion gave me and same or more speed. So at the moment, if I wanted to sacrifice speed for spin, I'd practice more wrist curl. And in my experience, that amount of mile per hour difference is gonna have a much bigger impact on being able to throw further as long as I don't completely butcher something else like accidentally throwing a roller or so much hyzer that I don't get any turn or a way bigger decrease in spin than we see here. Last time when I did this test but restricted to 60 miles per hour, we saw similar results in the spin difference, but last time I had less nose down with the dip joint flexion. And so that was in the back of my mind this time. So I thought to myself, I was gonna focus a little bit more on turning the key, uh, which is what I was doing to get nose down. And because I was focused more on it with the flexion, I ended up getting more nose down than with my normal uh, dip joint extension. I can throw way more nose down with the dip joint extension if I want to by focusing on turning the key more. So my conclusion on that is it's mostly a function of how focused I am on turning the key and it's not the grip change that's really having much of an impact directly on my nose angle. Last time I probably was just focused a little bit more on the feeling of my fingers being different and so I wasn't paying as much attention to turning the key. Now on to wobble. Um, normally with the dip joint extension I get like four to six degrees of wobble. So today for some reason I got a lot more than usual even for that. And I'm not sure why, uh, maybe I was over gripping and I do feel like I have a, a stronger grip with the dip joint extension. So maybe also uh, the disc starts to kind of rip out, but hangs on for a little bit before popping out of the remaining fingers. And then it creates some wobble instead of a clean release. Um, so a future test I could do is 
gripping as hard as I can with my normal grip and seeing if that increases or decreases wobble. Um, I already do grip pretty hard, but not as hard as I can usually. But then of course I want to compare that test to a loose grip test. But then that also makes me think about trying a loose body test with a tight grip and also with a loose grip and also an overall like full body tense test, which is generally recommended to not do, but I'll do it for science. I actually wouldn't be that surprised if I can throw harder if I literally try to tense my whole body. And I'm not that afraid of doing it because coming from rock climbing, you literally forget to breathe while you're rock climbing because your core is so tense to hang onto the wall. So I'm kind of used to having to deal with lots of body tension and still perform, you know, dynamic movements and flexible movements. Anyways, back to the wobble. Um, it seems like a big increase because the percentage is large, but it's easier to get that large percentage with these smaller numbers that can fluctuate kind of a significant amount. Um, and I'm not too worried about it because looking back at previous um, throws, I rarely average as high as eight. In order to reach my goals of being able to throw further, I still think getting a couple miles per hour extra is the most immediate way to do that. And so I want to continue using my current uh, grip with the dip joint extension. And I already have um, the ability to throw more nose down, so that's not limiting me. And I know from previous tests that I can increase my spin using more wrist, so I don't have to change my grip, uh, like finger curl, um, to be able to get more spin. And I'm a bit disappointed that I wasn't able to get closer to 65 um, average on the dip joint flexion here. So my final thought is with how many pros that seem use dip joint flexion or more curl in their fingers whenever I see in footage a glimpse of their grip, it makes me wonder if I'm missing something um, with how they're gripping it or I'm also wondering how many people have literally never thought of trying and or have never tried the dip joint extension because it just never occurred to them and maybe how many amateurs could potentially throw harder with it um, so i'd be curious to hear uh, anybody who tries this if it helps you throw any faster or if it's just something um, specific to me